Hey guys, in today's video, you're going to get to see how we pour a 70 by 40 by 6 inch slab with thickened edges. Now, right off the bat, you know, the, the pump guy plugged right up. You're going to see this just takes this little bit of rock right there to plug the hose. So we took the hose off, got him unplugged, washed the hose all off, hooked it back up, and we were good to go after that. So when we, we got about 70 yards coming today. We're using a 3,500 PSI mix, three-quarter stone. We got mid-range water reducer in the mix so we can pour it a little bit looser than normal. We can pour a wetter slump with that mid-range water reducer. We also got fiber mesh in the mix to go along with the wire mesh. So usually when we have a really thickened edge slab, the first thing we do is we go around the outside edge first, bring it up about 10 inches just to make sure the forms are going to hold. Once we know they're going to hold or we play with them a little bit, get them braced off so they're going to hold, then we can start attacking the slab. And we just do it one truck at a time. There you can see we're having to put a few more braces, a few more pins in this, just to make sure we keep the edges nice and straight. But we got the first truck dumped out. Now when, when, when you got a slab about 40 feet wide and it's six inches thick, once you get the edges filled up a certain ways, you're gonna go about 15 feet with each truck, with each 10 yard truck. So. We'll try to keep that in mind as we dump this out of the, the pump hoses. We'll, we'll go about 15, 16 feet wide, get the truck dumped out, and then we get our, our wet pad shot in there with a laser in the middle, and then we can screed it. Now today we're using the MBW Screed Demon, the battery powered one. And all I got, I got a Milwaukee battery in there, a five amp Milwaukee battery. You can put up to a 12 amp in there, but we find just using our five amps, the ones we already had with our Milwaukee tools works just fine. It'll do a whole floor like this easy with plenty of plenty of battery left. And we're just doing one bay at a time. That board, the screed board on that is 12 feet wide. So when I shoot my wet pads in there with a the laser, you know, I try to keep that in mind so we can just strike off our pads and then we can screed out the concrete using the the screed demon here going about 12 feet at a time and that makes you know you do one truck get it screeded second truck backs in gets mixed up gets backed up to the pump and then we you know we'll dump this truck out same thing another 15 feet now that water you see on top of the, the we got two inches of styrofoam under here with plastic on top the water you see on top is because it rained the night before it just gets collected on top of the poly so there's a couple things you could do. You could get a wet and dry back, suck it all out, or what we're doing is we're using the concrete to push it out as we pour, making sure not to trap any of it inside the concrete. Well, the concrete will displace it and it'll just keep pushing it. Once you get down to the end, you know, it'll run down into the into the thickened edge and just out the edge. And you'll get rid of all the water that way. So I'm shooting, I've got my laser over there on the right, that's me on the right, I'm shooting my pads there, making sure we're right to grade where, where we need to be in the middle. And then Luke and Darren now got the 14 foot hand screed and they're just striking it off using the hand screed. And that gives me something to go by when I go grab the power screed. I can, I can keep looking at my edges to make sure that I'm right on grade. And that gets the floor, it gets the slab really, really flat and level here as we pour it. We do have a couple floor drains coming up down this other end where they're going to have some garage doors. So you'll see how we screed the concrete a little differently when we get to those floor drains. But right now this section up here is mostly all flat. Now, it took quite a bit of pre-planning. We did all the setup here. We set the forms up. We put the styrofoam in. We put the wire in. We put the poly in. Uh, a plumber had, after we got the forum set up, a plumber had to come and he put in a little bit of plumbing for a bathroom. So this has been an ongoing, an ongoing project here for a couple weeks to get to this point right here. And, you know, we got to pre-plan the pump guy. We got to call him in advance, give him plenty of notice. And then we got to pre-plan the concrete to make sure we got seven trucks, you know, we can get them right back to back to back to make this go as fast as possible. Now what I'm doing right now is I got I got 50 yards here on the job. I got two more trucks coming and I'm just I'm just taking a look from where we are right now to where we got to go to make sure the next two trucks, 60 and 70, are going to finish this slab off. 
And if not, if I don't think it's gunnel, then I got to call the dispatcher and say, hey, you know, I might need a small balance after 70 yards, just so he knows and he doesn't send all those trucks he's got coming back somewhere else. Make sure he saves at least one for us. You can see I had the wire puller in my hand. We're pulling the wire up as we pour. And we're working the water out all at the same time. Now there was a little bump out over here, a little two foot bump out. And we're just gonna screed that little bump out area with the 14 foot screed. Then we can get all our pads struck again. We strike off those pads, you know, as we're striking it off right there, we're looking at the wet pad and we're looking at the part of the floor that we already screeded and we're just using we're using that magnesium screed to get the concrete level in that spot get it nice and flat in that spot and keep and make it about two feet wide so when I go to use this it gives me a really good nice flat spot to go from to get the rest of it screeded nice and flat it's actually the power screeds not very hard to use it's actually pretty easy when I set it down it kind of just floats on top and then I squeeze the trigger and it starts to vibrate and all I'm looking at is my ends making sure my ends are both touching as I'm pulling it back the real work is done by the two guys raking I mean they're the ones that need to make sure I got enough concrete and don't get it low but they also can't get it too high for me so there's a little bit of a little bit of a learning curve there if you're if you're new to raking uh, you got a really important job to make sure the guy's screeding does a good, you know, and makes his job as easy as possible when it comes to screeding. So I believe we're on truck five now, from truck 50. And we're trying to, you know, we're going at a good pace. We're not going too slow. We're not going too, too fast. But we want to make sure that we do get these guys dumped out, get them back to the concrete plant. So, you know, they have their day planned too. He plans seven trucks for us at 6.30 in the morning taking about 15 minutes or so to unload a truck and then he's got a second round of guys that want to pour you know whatever floors or walls so he expects us to get these trunk trucks dumped in a timely manner get them back to him so he can start his second round of jobs and then he's got a third round also and a fourth round probably figured and you know if he can kind of plan on how fast or how slow you are then he can get make sure he keeps everybody happy throughout the day generally with us you know because we pour with them every single day we have concrete ordered every day we usually pour floors every day unless it's raining out we have to cancel but they got a pretty good idea when they send us a truck that we're gonna dump it out just as quick as we can 10 15 minutes and get him sent back so today they were about 30 minutes away from the plant so I mean if we have to wait if we dump one like right here we, we get this truck 60 dumped out and for whatever reason whatever reason we're having to wait for truck 7 um, could have been one of those ones that we dumped earlier that had to re-trip but we had we did have a little bit of a wait for him probably like a 15 or 20 minute wait I mean that's gonna happen we we'd rather not we'd rather have them you know sitting there waiting right back to back but uh, some days some days it just doesn't work that way. Now what we're doing right now is we're going around the floor drain, so we're sloping the floor. We're sloping the floor, that's why we're using a smaller rod there. From the high point, which is the outside edge, down to the floor drain. I had to stick a rock on top of that little floor drain. It just, for whatever reason, uh, the we we had duct tape around it to hold it because the plumbers, the plumbers don't set those. Usually we set the caps. We didn't have any cement bonding tape, uh, bonding agent with us, so we just, usually duct tape them and we've had good luck with that but that one someone kicked it so we had to put a rock on it and make sure it stayed down nice and flat the other one there you can kind of see it's a little white spot there and right now I'm magging around that drain I'm gonna finish a little bit of that with that seven foot rod Luke's putting in some some uh, rebar though that's the that's the new fiber glass rebar that they've come out with it's really really light it's a little bit stronger it's supposed to be stronger actually than number four rebar steel rebar so we've been using quite a bit of that lately and then Luke's just getting the edge mag right there now this where there's two drains there there's a high point in between the drains the drains are about 
probably about 14 feet apart, 13, 14 feet apart, something like that. There's two garage doors going here in the front. So each drains right in the center of the garage bay. And right now, Darren is over on the left of the screed rod over by the drain. He's actually, he's actually screeding kind of downhill, if you want to call it. it pitch, the floor slopes about an inch from the outside edge down to that drain. And then once he gets by the drain, now he's going back uphill about an inch to a high point in between the two drains. You'll see it here in a second. And then he goes back downhill to the drain, and now, now he's going back uphill about an inch to get to the level part. That kind of that kind of shows you right there the slopes and the, and the drains. So it's a little trick to knowing how to screed with floor drains like that, especially multiple floor drains, to make sure you get the water running the right way. There's nothing worse than having a high point around the floor drain and the water running away from the drain. So um, it's actually not too bad to do once you get once you know the, the science behind it and just what you're doing. So right now where Darren screed now, that part of the floor is level. That's flat over there. And I'm bull floating. I'm bull floating right there in between the drains. And I'm making sure that I stay keeping the bull float with the slope of the drain and don't overlap a high point or go right over the center of the drain with the bull float. That's, you know, because that's the low point. So here these guys are, Luke and Darren are finishing up. Javi's just kind of raking the concrete getting out any excess concrete and however he's going to finish up bowl floating and that's basically you know how we pour a 70 by 40 big garage slab like this guy so any questions leave them down in the comments if uh, you like this type of video please smash the like button hit the subscribe button if you're not a subscriber I, I put out a couple videos a week come on back again and we'll see you on the next one